Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your brother Najib here, and we're back here at Dean Love with another amazing reflection with our special guest, Ustad Abdurrahman Kariya. Ustad, can you tell us the history of Kariya because the Sheikh Abdurrahman Kariya? <laughs> <laughs> That's another episode. <laughs> That's another episode. <laughs> All right. Inshallah, maybe one day we'll do a whole lineage of Ustad Abdurrahman Kariya. Yeah. So, inshallah, today uh, an amazing uh, thought and perspective that we want to share with you guys, which is Something that's very, very common yes, with course. a lot of students, which is the I'm statement, I'm in khas, I can't pray. Mm. Step, what are your thoughts on that statement when somebody says that to you? To be honest with you, I mean, uh, it's a very common uh, thing, excuse that people use. Oh, I'm in class, I have a class, or, you know, I can't go to Jum'ah, I can't pray that prayer because this class is very important, uh, I can't get my degree without it, and we use this really lame excuse if, if I might say uh, just to not find a you know, reason to uh, pray which is not a valid reason or yeah. it's not a valid excuse to miss prayer yeah. um, see one of the amazing things about our deen is that every single uh, pillar of Islam has a consensual rule you know if you're fasting if, if it's the month of Ramadan if you're traveling or sick you have consensual yeah. to not fast and yeah. fast at a better time. Hajj, if you don't have the money, you don't have to go for Hajj. If zakat, you don't have the money to pay zakat, you don't have to pay. It. <laughs> but prayer, prayer is one thing no that matter. no matter what, sick, traveling, yeah. you are in combat, you are a civilian, you are, it does not matter. Yes. There is no one that is excused from prayer. If you're physically disabled from head to toe, yeah. And you can't move one limb, yeah. you would pray with your eyes. That is the importance of prayer. Yeah. There is no concession to the prayer and its time. Yeah. What causes somebody do you think instead that they would value their class more than their prayer? Man. Honestly, that's a very good question, Ustad yeah. Najib. And many of the times it happens because people feel like, you know, they don't give the importance to prayer itself. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna salata Allah says that after talking about how to pray the prayer of salah in the prayer of fear, He says salah does not have any concession because it has to be prayed upon its time. So people that use the excuse, I'm in class and I can't pray. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about Allah is commanding those in the battlefield to pray. Imagine, imagine you. you in a class. So, I mean, and, we were, and I think we have to be realistic. We're not saying that, you know, drop your class. Yeah. But, you know, do we have legal rights to pray Salah? Yes, you do. And it's a matter of fact, it's all, you know, the system is designed around you. Mm. So if you don't demand it, mm -hmm. the teacher is not going to allow you to do it. Yes, You know what true. I mean? From the beginning of some courses, you know what I used to do? I'm like, hey, at this time, I have to go pray. Way before the course starts, you know what I mean? Mm. First day of class, you show up, hey, um... You know, it's class of 6 to 9, let's say, Maghrib yeah. at 7.30. Yeah. Like, at 7.30, I got to go out for five minutes. I got to go pray. Mm -hmm. If you respect yourself, everybody else will respect you. That is true. Well, that like, is the golden rule in life. That's the reality. And if you don't apply this principle now, yeah. when you go to the workforce, when you start working a professional career, yeah. corporate America, if you don't have these ground rules set for you now, oh you're going goodness. to struggle all throughout your life. Your life. Because you're going to compromise your prayers for work, you're going to compromise it for a meeting, for uh, your class, and for all sorts of other excuses that are really not valid to miss prayer. Yeah. So this is our advice to you, and I think Ustad Najib agrees, that first and foremost, if you're going to take a class that's at a time of prayer, yeah. try to find it at a better time. Yeah. If that class can be you know, available to you at a time where your prayer is not disrupted. Yeah. Now let's say the class, you cannot find it yeah. in any other time except during a salah prayer, like Jum'ah, for example, where a lot of people leave Jum'ah prayer in order to take a class. I right? have lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so things like that. What we advise them is that try to make an effort by taking the time out from your class. Take your class, but let your professor, your teacher, or whoever yeah. it is know that that time is allocated for prayer. And you're going to step out of the room, you're going to step out of the classroom to observe your prayer. And yeah. you have legal rights here. If anyone denies you that, you can go to all the civil, uh, you know, or, uh, civil uh, organizations that help Muslims out in their work environment at school and colleges. 
and they will help you out in making sure that you have the legal right to observe your prayer and your Jum'ah. Ah. No one is going to deny you that yep. uh, that right. No one will accept you. Yes. If you take if you take your own rights away, no one's going to give it to you. Yes, that's, that's true. That's the There's just there's things in life where you have to step up. And you're right. If you can't step up and face your professor and, and, and do it, then avoid that time of the class. Yeah. You know, I know brothers who don't take any class on Fridays because you know they don't want to risk their Juma. Yeah. And I know brothers who have laps mm. and all these different things in the middle of Juma. When you tell them, Akhi, what's going on with you, man? I, you have hasid this time and there's Jum'ah time. I mean, and it's so you severe, you know, yeah. leaving the Jum'ah prayer. The Prophet ﷺ gave a very stern warning. He says, yeah, I The Prophet ﷺ says that the people who are leaving the Jum'ah prayer should stop right away, meaning stop leaving the Jum'ah, otherwise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause their hearts to become sealed. And that is the worst sign. When your heart becomes sealed, is the heart of a hypocrite, Allah, Allah seals. So it's very important that a person should, uh, you know, take the importance of their prayers and their commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very serious. And I promise you this, Allah will never fail you if yeah. you stay committed to Him. As That's long true. as you honor that contract with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not fail you. You will not be, you know... Uh, you know, you will not suffer. Yeah. You will not uh, lose anything when you are committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you make that sacrifice. The Prophet ﷺ informed us that man taraka shay'an, whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, yeah. whether it's a class, whether it's, you know, that job that was very, very, you know, uh, you know, beautiful and you wanted or that class that you had to take, whoever leaves it for the sake of Allah in order to make sure that, you know, he observes his prayer and he observes his and uh, contract with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him something similar or even better yeah. in return. And that is the promise of Allah. So Allah will not fail you. SubhanAllah. And that's really, uh, that's, that's really the reality. Allah is in charge of your success. So how do you abandon Allah in order to gain success? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of understanding, prioritization, and just coming up to the right perspective in life. Mm. You know what I mean? Allah is in charge of your success. You succeeding in life, Allah is in charge of that. You're not in charge of it. So, you know, mm. Allah says that. Yeah, have you seen the ones who have taken their ilah as their own desires? So, if you submit to your own desires and you say, I'd rather be in khas mm. than in salah, than to go and pray, I mean, then your desires are more powerful yes. than your relationship with Allah. You know what I mean? And your personal attainments in life, when in fact Allah is in charge of all of it. So, inshallah, we advise everybody to pray. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, class is not an excuse. That's not. That's that's not an excuse. It's at not going to cut it with Allah. So you have to, you know, um, take the, uh, take those advices that we, you know, gave you, and try to use whatever that's around you to uh, find a way to get to prayer, inshallah. And we wish you the best, inshallah. Wish you the sense. best, inshallah. Inshallah, take the best of what we have said, and we leave you with those words. Sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Inshallah. بإسلامي وإيماني أضاء الكون وزمن بإسلامي وإيماني أضاء